Hello, and welcome to this special election program for WCMO News Center 15. I'm Abby Scott. Early voting has started, and candidates are still campaigning in the Ohio Valley. And of course, we were at the October candidate forum that was held here at Marriott College campus. WCMO TV's Declan Garrett has coverage on the 6th District Representative race to the Congress. As Election Day draws closer, Michael Kripchak takes on Michael Rooley in the 6th Congressional District of Ohio. With the two battling for a seat in Congress, here's what you need to know about each candidate's values and policy for a more well-informed decision on Election Day. We asked Kripchak simply, Why him? Because it's time we have an innovator and a leader who actually understands science in Congress. We have more than enough businessmen, we have more than enough lawyers, and we see where that's gotten us. Because of his history as a military scientist, Kripchak offers the Mahoney Marietta Manufacture Corridor. It's focused on doing advanced materials manufacturing because Intel and Altium cells shouldn't have to leave the state to get any of the materials that they need. Refined materials. Kripchak also wants for the commercialization of fusion energy. On the other side, Michael Rooley is running to regain control of his seat, but we weren't able to get in touch with him. Rooley was born and raised in the Mahoning Valley, and his main policy points are in favor of small businesses, cutting government spending, and a strict immigration policy, specifically shutting down the border. He's a father and a husband, and originally served as a Letonia school board president before running for the Senate in 2018. The two candidates faced off in a special election back in June, where Rooley won, receiving roughly 32,000 to Kripchak's 27,000 votes. But who knows what will happen when they face off again this coming election day. That's all I have for now. My name is Declan Garrett, and this is WCMO-TV. Thank you, Declan. Next, WCMO-TV's Isabel Polling looks at the state Senator 30th District race. On Wednesday, October 2nd, Ohio Senate District 30 candidate Ari Faber made an appearance at Marietta College to discuss issues that were of concern and how he can resolve those issues. Faber is currently fighting for social justice and ensuring everyone is making ends meet and can afford the necessities. When asked why people should vote for him, Faber said he is working to bring back the American dream of having a work and family life back to our people, to advocate for investment in the region, and to bring hope and pr prosperity back. While Faber is not a politician, he sees politics as the sus sustainable way to help others and make a real systematic change for the community. We do this by investing in our infrastructure and creating union jobs, increasing access to health care, and decreasing the cost of food and groceries. Our region deserves modern roads and highways. When we focus on our infrastructure, we can create good paying union jobs that provide a gateway into middle class life for people. In Northwest Ohio, we're seeing one of the largest solar plants globally being built. In Central Ohio, Intel is investing $28 billion. We should be next, but in order to be more competitive, we must fix our roads, our bridges, and our highways. But you cannot work a job if you are sick or in pain and cannot see a doctor. Last year, over 600,000 Ohioans lost some form of Medicaid health care. Not because they were ineligible, but because of paperwork issues. It's time we cut the crap in Columbus and work to pass legislation such as House Bill 174, which would create the Ohio health care plan and extend coverage to all Ohioans. Nobody should be forced to choose between putting food on the table or seeing a doctor. I support increasing SNAP benefits and making them able to be used at farmers markets statewide, increasing access to local fresh food as well as supporting our farmers. It's time for real leadership in Columbus. It's time that we bring back opportunity to our people. Thank you, Isabel. Up next, WCMO TV's reporter, Zach Warstel, has details on the 94th State District race. The Ohio 94th State Representative seat is on the ballot this election year. Incumbent Representative Republican Jay Edwards has reached his term limit promoting two new candidates onto the ballot. Kevin Ritter is prepared to embrace the pioneer spirit. 
as your state representative, I believe it's essential to protect Second Amendment rights. Edwards endorsed Ritter, stating, I've seen what an effective and sincere advocate Kevin has been for our corner of the state. Kevin was born and raised in the Detroit area and attended Central Michigan University, where he graduated in 1990 with a history and political science degree. Ritter wants to preserve what is best for the next generation. This includes addressing aging water and sewer systems and updating the quality of bridges and roads. Wenda Sheard is for the people as a Democratic candidate. Politics is at its core relationships between people. I have to work with not only the, the House Democratic Caucus, but members of the House Republican Caucus. Sheard grew up in the Cleveland area, earning a bachelor's in law from Cleveland State University in 1979 and her PhD in political science from the University of North Texas in 2004. She has worked as an attorney in Athens County for 22 years, working under judges of both political parties. We need accessible health care for every person in our district without long waits or long commutes to see medical professionals. There's shenanigans up there, and a lot of it's due to the gerrymandering, the severe gerrymandering. Thank you, Zach. The next race heads closer to home, the Washington County Recorder race. Andrew Sashinsky has more information. Marietta College hosted a candidate forum on Wednesday, October 2nd, giving each candidate an opportunity to address the community and answer some of their questions. The Washington County Recorder position is one of many on the ballot. While Republican candidate Teresa Judson declined our invitation to attend, Democratic candidate and incumbent Tracy Wright joined the forum. She's a 44-year veteran of the Washington County Recorder's office. She currently is in her eighth term as county recorder. She serves on the Ohio Recorders Legislative Committee as well as a subcommittee for fraudulent documents served to recorders. She is an Eastern Star member and is also on the Ohio Farm Bureau. During the forum, the public wanted to know what her goals would be if she were to be reelected. I currently have a big project going on, which we recently passed a Senate bill that's going to require it for all recorders in Ohio. That being that our records have to be online back to 1980 and right now my records are online from 1996 forward and that project is currently being worked on to get all of those from 1980 to 1996 brought together and it's a rather huge project <laughs> it's a big undertaking but we are in the process of getting that done mm. but Ohio has passed that law and I I think it's effective in 2026 that we all do. Early voting has started, so be sure to cast your vote early or on Election Day, November 5th, 2024. For WCMO News, I'm Andrew Shashinsky. Thank you, Andrew. On our ballot for this upcoming election is Issue 1, Ohio's Redistricting Amendment. WCMO TV's Kylie Kozel has more information on what Issue 1 is, as well as other national hot topics. We're just weeks away from the upcoming elections in Ohio and across the United States, and we're breaking down what voters can expect this November on the ballot. There are a few key issues that voters are focusing on, with a big one hitting here right in the mid-Ohio Valley. Ohioans will be voting on whether the state should remove politicians from redistricting process. Known as Issue 1, voting yes will make it illegal to gerrymander voting districts. In other words, arranging election districts in a way that gives a political party an unfair advantage. A yes on Ohio Issue 1 will ban current or former politicians, political party officials, and lobbyists from sitting on the commission. It will also require fair and impartial districts, require the commission to operate under an open and independent process, and create the 15-member Ohio Citizens Redistricting Commission. Also on people's minds, the U.S. presidential election between former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris. Their campaigns are especially intense in battleground states. Key issues that voters are paying attention to are border security, strengthening the economy, the drug epidemic, reproductive rights, lowering energy costs, tax cuts, and lowering costs for families. For WCMO News Center 15, I'm Kylie Kozel. Thanks, Kylie. Now that we've covered the candidate forum that was held here at Marietta College campus, let's move forward to learn what people in our area think. WCMO News Center 15's Eric Thurman was on the street and has this report. 
I'm Eric Thurman. I'm a senior. Major is broadcasting journalism. I'm here with Panucci. Uh, do you plan to vote for the election? Why and why not? I do plan to vote for this election. I just feel like there's some things with the economy right now that could be better, and I'd like to uh, play a part in that in the election. Do you know where to vote and how to vote? Yeah, I do. I'm probably going to do the uh, mail-in ballots since I'm in PA and we're in Ohio, so I'd probably have to do the mail-in ballot for that. Who do you plan on voting for? I plan on voting for Trump. Uh, just economy-wise, I just feel like he'd do a better job with the economy. All right, thank you. Yep, you got it. Do you plan on voting for the election this year? Yes. Who do you plan on voting for? Probably Trump. Do you know where to vote? Uh, back home, but being down here at college, I probably probably have to do an absentee ballot. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Now that we know what voters in our area think, let's fill in the gaps in your knowledge. WCMO New Center 15's Evie Gravlin is here with practical facts when it comes to casting your ballot. Hello, welcome to your guide to voting. My name is Evie Gravlin and I'm here to support you through gaining your best knowledge on why and how to vote for this upcoming election. Mandy Amos, who is the director of the Washington County Board of Elections, was able to sit down with me and share her best knowledge through some questions that I had asked her. For the first question, I asked her, why is it important for us to vote? And this is what she said. Mm -hmm. um, it's important every, for everyone to vote um, because this is, you know, what makes our country. That's one of our fundamental things um, here in this country is your right to vote. And that helps us um, pick our future. That way everybody gets a chance to, you know, pick what the future is going to be like for our country. For the people around my age who are newer to voting or for people that are just not registered to vote, I asked her why. Why should we vote? Um, since it, that is our fundamental right, and uh, then that gives them their right that they can complain about how things, you know, if they don't like the way things are going um, with the country, then that's their chance to change it. That gives them, you know, their, their step. That's something they can do, and it's an easy, easy thing for them to do. Since I can be pretty bad at remembering deadlines, I made sure to ask her when the voting registration deadlines were for her location. Mm -hmm. uh, the registration deadline for this election is October 7th, so that's coming up on Monday. And our office will be open from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. that night, so that gives people extra time to come in. Thank you, Mandy. Since Washington County is a big area, we are split up into precincts which help us know what, what location we go to to vote. So how do you know what precinct you're in? Each person um, is registered to a precinct based on their address. And so that um, they can look that up on our website or they could call in or they could come into our office and ask us. So, and then um, there's our, we have p several polling locations and there's several precincts at each polling location. And we can let them know that or that's on the website too. You can also vote from home and through the mail, which is super cool, and it's called voting absentee. Mandy helps us describe how we can do that. Um, if anyone wants to vote absentee, uh, there's absentee through the mail, and to do that, they have to complete an application, and it just asks for their name and address. Um, they have to provide a form of identification in their birthday, and then they have to sign it, and they can get that application from us or from on our website. And then they, we also have absentee voting in our office, um, which some people also call early voting. And all those things start on October 8th, so the day after the voter registration deadline. Now, when does voting start and end, and where do we go to? Um, the last day that we do have voting um, here in our office, if they come to do that, is the, sat or the Sunday before election day. Um, so that would be November 3rd. So that's the last day that they can come in, uh, which is a Sunday. Uh, but we are open that day from 1 to 5. So, but, yeah, just if you're not registered yet or if you're not sure, just make sure and check that out. And um, we'd be glad to help you. Or, like I said, just go to our website and check it out, too. Well, that is your short crash course to voting. I would like to thank Mandy for donating her time to speak with me. And I hope this gave you a more clear understanding about voting because I feel very educated. Thank you for watching, and I'm Evie Gravelin, and I'll see you later.
Thank you for the report, Evie. And thank you for watching the special election edition. Again, I'm Abby Scott, and from all of us here at WCMO News Center 15, we thank you for watching our special election program.